The story follows a seemingly perfect couple living a harmonious life. However, their happiness shatters when the wife discovers that her beloved husband is having an affair with her closest friend. Heartbroken, she initially decides to divorce him, but when she learns that he has no assets in his name, she postpones the divorce, unwilling to give him half of her hard-earned property. The story begins by introducing Zhang and Su, a seemingly lovely couple who are newlywed. Zhang is a movie actor, while Su works as a scriptwriter. Together, they appear to have the perfect life. Su shares a deep bond with her best friend, Inyang, and their friendship seems unbreakable. During a feast at Su's house, Inyang suddenly claims she has to leave for something urgent. Concerned for her friend's safety, the trusting and innocent Su asks her husband, Zhang, to drive Inyang home. Little does she know that the two most important people in her life are betraying her behind her back. The following day, Su receives a message from an unknown sender, revealing that her husband, Zhang, is cheating on her with one of the women having dinner with him. The message shatters her, and she starts suspecting each of the women who were there that night. However, as she observes them all laughing and chatting comfortably with Zhang, she is unable to identify who the culprit is. Sleepless and anxious, Su tries to contact the anonymous sender, but the call goes unanswered. The uncertainty eats at her, and the next morning, she confides in her best friend, Inyang. This instantly makes Inyang uneasy. With a hint of concern, Inyang asks if Su is planning to divorce Zhang. While Su does want to end her marriage, she first wants revenge. She's determined to make both Zhang and his mistress suffer, forcing them to beg for mercy. Frightened by Su's determination, Inyang tries to warn her, saying the plan could backfire, and that Zhang's mistress might even end up taking Su's place as his new wife. As they talk, a woman suddenly approaches them, recognizing Inyang from her recent role as a mistress in a TV drama. In a fit of rage, the woman throws coffee at Inyang, calling her shameless and hinting that she might be a real-life mistress, too. That night, when Zhang returns home and goes to shower, Su takes the opportunity to check his phone. Her heart sinks when she discovers a series of raunchy messages exchanged with someone saved under the name of Zhang's friend. Reading further, she realizes they're planning to meet again that very night. The revelation of her husband's betrayal makes Su physically ill, as the reality of being married to such a monster hits her hard. Later that evening, Zhang spikes her wine with sleeping pills, coaxing her to drink it. After she pretends to fall asleep, Zhang leaves her on the bed and quietly departs to meet with Inyang. Unbeknownst to him, Su had sensed something was off and only pretended to be asleep. She follows Zhang and, to her horror, finds him and Inyang at an upscale club. Inyang is comfortably seated on Zhang's lap, confirming Su's worst fears. When they leave for a hotel room, Su follows them, burning with rage and a strong desire to catch them red-handed and publicly shame them. But instead of confronting them directly, she decides on a more strategic approach. Sue goes to a nearby phone booth and reports them to the police for soliciting prostitutes, leading to their brief arrest. Though the charges are minor and don't hold them for long. Seeking further revenge, Sue hires a divorce lawyer. To her dismay, she learns that since Zhang has no assets in his name and she is the breadwinner, a divorce might result in her losing half of her property to him. This forces Sue to rethink her strategy. Undeterred, Sue hires someone to leak the photos she had secretly taken outside the hotel. Meanwhile, Zhang is enjoying his time with Inyang, oblivious to Sue's plot. When the pictures, with their faces blurred, appear online, Zhang panics. Just as he's reeling from the leaked photos, Zhang receives a threatening message, carefully orchestrated by Sue. The blackmailer claims to have irrefutable evidence of their infidelity and demands $700,000 in exchange for keeping the pictures from going viral, giving them just 24 hours to come up with the money. Both Zhang and Inyang are broke, unable to arrange such a large sum in such a short time. Desperate, Zhang turns to Su during dinner, asking her to lend him $700,000, claiming it's for a business deal. Su, pretending to be shocked, acts as she knows nothing, but agrees to give him the money the next morning. However, Inyang, ever cautious, advises Zhang not to give the blackmailer the full amount at once. Instead, they send $70,000, hoping to get the man arrested for blackmail, thinking they can outsmart him. Although the blackmailer forces them to provide the money in cash all at once at the exhibition center. Scared, he quickly rushes to the exhibition center with $700,000 in cash. Nervously following the blackmailer's instructions, Zhang drops the bag of money into a trash bin, but when a sweeper takes the trash, Zhang mistakenly assumes she is the blackmailer. Frantically, he checks the bin only to find the money bag has been swapped with a stack of plain paper. Unknown to Zhang, Su had already anticipated his actions and switched the bag at the security checkpoint earlier. 
Now, with Zhang failing to deliver the ransom, Su decides it's time to execute her next move. She leaks the incriminating pictures of Zhang and Yang to several major news agencies, ensuring the scandal becomes public. As the news explodes, Zhang and Yang are left in shock and disbelief. Just as they're trying to figure out what went wrong, Su arrives, playing the perfect innocent wife. She expresses her faith in both Zhang and Yang, claiming she could never believe they would betray her. But while Zhang is relieved that Su seems to trust him, Yang becomes suspicious. She starts to believe that Su might have been the one behind the leak and is now pretending to be supportive. In a desperate attempt to salvage their reputations, Zhang and Yang hold a press conference to address the rumors of their affair. Su supports them publicly, claiming that the viral photos were a misunderstanding linked to her upcoming drama, with Zhang and Yang simply rehearsing scenes for their roles. To add further damage control, Su forces Yang to step down as the lead actress, making her publicly apologize for the misunderstanding and tarnishing her career in the process. Meanwhile, Su's new friend, Ganga, who works as Zhang's assistant, faces her own crisis. Director Wu discovers a costly $300,000 mistake in her paperwork. He offers to overlook the error in exchange for spending a night with him. She thinks of reaching out to her neglectful husband to help her, but he doesn't listen to her and gives zero F about her. Then Ganga reaches out to Su for help. Su comes up with a plan. That night, when Director Wu shows up at the hotel expecting Ganga, he's shocked to find his own wife waiting for him instead. Ganga had coordinated with Su, who arranged for Wu's wife to confront him at the last minute. The confrontation exposes Wu's predatory behavior and ruins his plan to take advantage of Ganga. The next morning, Zhang becomes obsessed with tracking down the blackmailer. Using a location tracker, he and Yang are led to a beggar in a remote area. When they confront the man, he claims to have found the blackmailer's phone in a trash bin and denies any involvement in the scheme. Now Zhang tries to keep his distance from Yang, but when he receives a photo of Yang appearing injured, he rushed to her apartment and he finds out that she was merely tricking him to get his attention. This fuels his confusion and frustration even more as he tries to manage the increasingly complicated relationship with Su and Yang. Meanwhile, Su has her own plans. Without telling Zhang, she buys a house abroad with her money in her own name so he can't claim it after divorce. She also visits a herbal therapist, purchasing medicine to lower Zhang's sex drive. That evening, she complains about his breath, suggesting he might be sick and convinces him to take the herbal remedy. The next morning, Su meets Ganga for dinner and learns about the strained relationship between Ganga and her husband, Shin. Ganga, despite being a devoted wife, is being neglected. Moved by Ganga's situation, Su vows to help her friend reclaim her husband's attention. Meanwhile, Yang is determined to steal Zhang from Su when she confronts him at his house. Zhang is terrified. Yang threatens to expose their affair if he ignores her. Just then, Su walks in, seeing Zhang sitting tensely on the couch as Yang comes downstairs. Surprisingly, Yang declares that she is pregnant with her boyfriend's child, and she plans to keep the baby. Both Su and Zhang are thrown into panic, unsure of what Yang is plotting. The next day, while heading to dinner, Zhang gets a message from Yang, luring him to spend time with her. Desperate to keep Su distracted, he hands her his credit card, telling her to go shopping and promises to take her out some time later. But after some time, Zhang gets frustrated when he finds out that Su has spent a large sum of money. Su, continuing her support of Ganga, takes her to her husband Shin's office in a beautiful outfit to surprise him. Shin is amazed by the change and proudly introduces her to his colleagues. However, his joy is short-lived when he later receives bad news from his business partners and takes his frustration out on Ganga. Later, Su takes Zhang to a charity auction and reveals she bought a 6.6-carat diamond in his name. She says this will help improve his image and distance him from rumors about an affair with Yang. But Su's real motive is that the diamond, given to her as Zhang's gift, will be hers alone in their upcoming divorce. The next day, Su arranges for a minor accident to get Yang to the hospital, where they discover Yang was never pregnant and lied for attention. Zhang is furious at Yang for deceiving him, realizing she's as manipulative as he is. Su then speeds up her plan to ruin Zhang's career by spreading false rumors that he's looking for a new film agency. This gossip threatens his industry relationship. Zhang, confused and angry, meets with Yang again. She tells him she believes Su is behind everything, including quietly transferring assets and planning to divorce Zhang, leaving him with nothing. Zhang and Yang decide to team up to regain Su's trust and stop her before she completely cuts them out. As Zhang's deceitful behavior reaches new heights, he nearly risks his life to protect Su from an accident. This act makes Su start to reconsider her harsh plans against him. 
she temporarily halts her plan to spread false rumors about him. Meeting with Inyang again, Zhang reveals that he plans to take revenge on Su and claims he wants what's rightfully his as her husband. He takes Su to a romantic dinner and surprises her with memories of their marriage, wishing her a happy third anniversary. Su, moved by Zhang's apparent affection, starts to rethink her decisions. Ganga, puzzled by Su's sudden change of heart, wonders why Su has stopped her plans to ruin Zhang's life. Meanwhile, Zhang attempts to steal Su's expensive jewelry from her safe to sell it, only to discover that the jewelry is fake. Su had anticipated his attempt and replaced the genuine pieces with replicas. Enraged, Zhang confronts Su, blaming her for his infidelity, but Su sees through his attempts to project his insecurities. She threatens to report him to the police for stealing the fake jewelry worth $500,000 and plans to show a video of him committing theft to ensure he faces legal consequences. Ganga, meanwhile, receives a late-night call from her husband, asking her to deliver an important file. She arrives at his location to find him enjoying himself with friends, realizing that it was a ploy by Mr. Shen to test her obedience. This incident adds to her frustration. The next morning, Ganga meets with her neighbor Xiao and Shen, seeing them together, becomes jealous and confronts Ganga. He accuses her of infidelity, which makes Ganga furious, as she was simply being polite to Xiao. Su visits a doctor and discovers that she is seven weeks pregnant. Despite her initial intention to abort the baby, meeting a single mother and her child causes Su to reconsider. Nevertheless, she plans to proceed with the abortion. Zhang, searching through Su's work laptop, finds a supposed new movie script and plans to use it to blackmail Su, threatening to leak it if she doesn't give him half of her asset. However, Ganga overhears this and steals the USB drive containing the supposed script. When Ganga gives the USB to Su, they discover that it is part of Zhang and Inyang's scheme to blackmail Su. All four meet up, with Zhang demanding a divorce and half of Su's assets while Inyang insists on securing drama contract. Su agrees to meet their demands to protect Ganga and hires her as her assistant. Back at home, Mr. Shin finds Su's pregnancy report, mistakenly believing it belongs to Ganga. In a rage, he confronts Xiao but gets knocked out by a door. The next morning, he finds divorce papers left by Ganga, who is tired of being treated poorly. She asks him to sign the papers, and he does, leaving the house. Zhang goes to Su's house, admitting his wrongdoings and asking to reconcile for the sake of their child. Su, determined to end their marriage, agrees to reconcile under specific conditions. Zhang must divorce her without claiming any of her assets, sign a prenup that guarantees all her property remains hers, and never use her name for work in the film industry. Zhang, confused by these terms, leaves in frustration. Su brings Ganga to her house, supporting her as she deals with the fallout from her divorce. The next morning, Su decides to keep her baby after seeing a newborn, despite Inyang's discontent. They go shopping for baby items to prepare for the child. Su, celebrating her freedom and friendship with Ganga, invites her out for drink. During the evening, Ganga expresses sadness over Su's situation. When Inyang learns of Su's pregnancy, she suggests aborting the baby to prevent Zhang from using it to win Su back, but Su refuses and leaves. Inyang, feeling betrayed and desperate, attempts to harm Su's unborn child. Su falls down the stairs, resulting in the loss of her baby. In her grief and anger, Su confronts Zhang's boss, asking for help to ruin Zhang's career. When the boss refuses, Su resorts to blackmail using private photos of the boss committing fraud. As a result, Zhang's credit card is blocked, and his advertising contracts are cancelled. Zhang, infuriated, confronts Su at her studio. He is fed up with her scheming and demands she stop her revenge. Su reveals her desire to see him suffer to achieve her own happiness. Zhang, pushed to his limit, violently assaults Su. However, Su had anticipated this and used the scene to catch him in the act, with many witnesses present. Su then calls the police, and during the interrogation, she demands that Zhang face severe punishment for his actions and serve time in prison. Later, Ganga meets with her husband Mr. Shin at her apartment. He feels sorry for suspecting her and wants to get back together with her. Ganga initially refuses to forgive him, but when Mr. Shin saves her from getting hurt, she begins to reassess her feelings. He then apologizes sincerely and promises to be a better husband, leading Ganga to forgive him and give their relationship another chance. Meanwhile, Inyang becomes a public pariah after news of her affair with Zhang goes viral. She faces severe backlash from the public and her neighbors, who accuse her of being a homewrecker. Everywhere she goes, she encounters scorn and insults. Inyang, feeling isolated and ashamed, visits Zhang in prison to tell him that the scandal has ruined her life and wants to end their relationship, leaving him alone behind the bars. As Ganga's situation stabilizes, 
Shin appears to have learned his lesson and treats her with love and respect. Later, In Yang faces eviction from her apartment though her landlord finds In Yang unconscious in the bathtub. Although, this is just a stunt to gain public sympathy by claiming she attempted to end her life out of regret. But Su exposes this fake suicide stunt publicly, revealing In Yang's deceit. That night, Ganga discovers Shin being beaten by loan sharks demanding money. She intervenes to save him. But now she begins to suspect that Shin only returned to her because of lack of money and place. The following day, Su goes to sign an important business contract. During the meeting, a client expresses interest in Ganga and asks if he can spend time with her alone. Su, suspicious and protective, ends the deal and leaves. Ganga later encounters the client, who explains that he wanted to offer Ganga a senior manager position, but Su rejected the deal out of spite saying Ganga doesn't deserve that position. Returning home, Ganga finds her house adorned with flowers. Shin proposes to Ganga once more, hoping to rekindle their relationship and leave the city together since he has no money. Ganga, moved by his gesture and the thought of a fresh start, decides to support him. When Ganga asks Su for $700,000 to help Shin, Su realizes that Ganga is being manipulated and refuses to help her husband. Later, while Su is spending alone time at a cafe, she meets a young man named Wang, who is watching her recently written drama and harshly criticizes her work. On her way back, Su breaks her heel, and surprisingly Wang appears there, seeing her in trouble, Wang helps her get home. When loan sharks show up to threaten Shin, he tells them that his wife is friends with a famous scriptwriter who can help pay his debt if they ask her. The loan sharks then rush to Su's office, expecting the money. However, Su denies any personal connection and says Ganga is just her secretary, trying to protect Ganga from any danger. Unfortunately, Ganga overhears Su's harsh words and feels hurt. When Ganga later comes home to find her husband badly injured, she grows angry at Su for not helping them. Next, Ganga starts to make Su sign new contracts with her new clients in order to earn commissions from them. Later that night, Wang appears at Su's house. Wang requests that she eat dinner with him as it will make him really happy. Although she has already eaten, she lets him inside knowing that he is a good person, but she suspects that he might want to start a relationship with her. Su claims that it is pointless for him to try and impress her as she just got out of a divorce and isn't looking for another relationship yet. When Su goes out for coffee, she runs into Wang again. She feels frustrated because, even though she rejected him last night, he's now stalking her. Later, as she heads to the office, Wang starts following her all the way there, which confuses her. Soon, she finds out that he's actually the new candidate for a job interview. Su suspects Wang only applied to the job to be near her, so she refuses to hire him. But Wang insists that he meets all the job requirements. Ganga steps in and suggests Su give him a chance. Reluctantly, Su offers him a low wage and a 12-hour workday, but Wang gladly accepts. The next morning, when Wang arrives at work, Su treats him coldly, which bothers him. He notices that she's kind to everyone else but not to him. Su brushes it off, saying it's just how she is. She then assigns him to read three books and take notes. All in one day. That night, on her way home, Su checks Wang's work and is impressed by his dedication, even though he hasn't finished yet and still has to work through the night. Meanwhile, Zhang has been released from prison. The next morning, Ganga secretly sends something from Su's office to her private client using a fast delivery service. She then brings a newly arrived parcel to Su. Su is shocked to see that someone has sent her old photos with a malicious intent. Afterward, Zhang threatens Ganga, forcing her to meet with him. When they meet, he blackmails her, saying he'll expose how she's been betraying Su unless she gives him $150,000, which he promises to return later. The next morning, Su finds out that the payment she made to Ganga for their contract is still pending. Ganga tells Su that she already gave the money to their client and assumes the bank is just verifying the payment. Frightened, Ganga goes to see Zhang and asks for the money back. But Zhang refuses, admitting he's already lost it all. Instead, he demands the keys to Su's house so he can steal the rare 6.6 carat diamond. Reluctantly, Ganga gives him the keys she took from Su's purse. At Su's house, Zhang takes the diamond, but his greed kicks in, and he starts stealing more. Suddenly, Su appears, recording everything. Zhang realizes that Ganga had already confessed to Su about his threat. Furious but trying to stay calm, Zhang leaves Su's house. However, just outside, he gets into an accident. Worried, Su and Ganga rush him to the hospital. Unfortunately, due to a head injury, Zhang falls into a coma, and it's unclear if he will ever wake up puzzled as to why Zhang would go so far as to threaten Ganga for money. Ganga lies that she was terrified after Zhang's death threats and felt she had no choice. 
Moved by her fear and honesty, Su forgives Ganga for taking the $150,000. Later, when Wang finds out they're meeting a famous film director, he gets really excited. Su is surprised by his enthusiasm and decides to take him instead of Ganga, who has been working very hard lately. When they arrive in a different city to meet the director, Wang learns about the director's likes and dislikes. He even helps Su pick out a dress to impress the director. They meet with director Lee and do their best to make a good impression in hopes of securing a business deal. After the meeting, Wang notices that Su hasn't eaten for hours, so he takes her to a small roadside restaurant that she's never been to before. Meanwhile, Ganga feels uneasy about Su taking Wang, a new employee, on such an important business trip instead of her. She's also worried that Su might learn about her stealing money from her clients. Shin suggests to Ganga that she should take a large sum of money and run before Su finds out about her secrets. Later, as Wang and Su stroll through the streets, Wang buys her a pair of slippers so she doesn't have to walk in uncomfortable heels. He notices she seems a bit down, thinking about her ex-husband's car accident. Su admits she has mixed feelings. She thought she'd be happy, but now she realizes that not all the revenge-driven characters in her stories end up feeling satisfied. She's experiencing that for herself now. Su confesses that she's afraid of being lonely forever, thinking no one will love or marry her. To her surprise, Wang tells her he'd marry her right away and hugs her. The next day, Su spots Ganga getting into a car with an envelope. The following day, during Su's script presentation to Mr. Lee, he suddenly cuts the meeting short. Confused and worried, Su asks why, and Mr. Lee's assistant reveals that they had already seen the same story the day before. Ganga tries to convince Su that it must be a coincidence, but Su knows it's impossible since both stories match perfectly. Now, she's certain someone has leaked her script but Ganga denies any involvement. Later, it's revealed that Wang was the one who leaked Su's script. He had met with Inyang, who convinced him that Su was a bad person and offered him money to work for her. Inyang then pushes Wang to take intimate photos with Su, intending to ruin Su's reputation by making it seem like she had an affair while she was still married to Zhang. But Wang has fallen in love with Su and refuses to continue working with Inyang. Now that Su's film contract with Mr. Li was cancelled, the producers demand their money back from Ganga, throwing her into a panic. She manages to buy some time by convincing them to wait until Su can secure the contract with Mr. Li again. Meanwhile, Wang finds Su passed out at a bar. Worried, he takes her back to her house. Even though Su treats all her employees well, she still can't figure out who betrayed her. Unexpectedly, Wang seizes the moment to take compromising photos of her and edits them before handing them to Inyang. He asks her to keep his involvement a secret from Su. The next morning, Inyang uploads the pictures online, and soon, rumors spread that Su was having an affair with her boyfriend while still married to Zhang. Inyang shows up, claiming that the man in the photos is Su's boyfriend, who works as a scriptwriter in her company despite having no experience. Inyang goes further, accusing Su of cheating on Zhang, and says that when Zhang found out, Su used her influence to manipulate the media into believing that Zhang was the one having an affair with Inyang, ruining both their reputations. However, what Inyang doesn't realize is that Su is far smarter than she imagined. When Inyang sees Wang standing there, she's shocked. We flash back to the previous night, where we learn that Wang couldn't go through with taking advantage of Su in her vulnerable state. He realizes that Su had seen him taking pictures but it surprised her that he stopped in the middle. Su, knowing he was the one who betrayed her, asks why he did this. Wang admits that it was her best friend, Inyang, who had offered him money to deceive Su, but he ended up falling in love with Su and couldn't betray her anymore. Wang then goes public with the truth, showing the media that the pictures were fake and professionally edited. He also exposes that it was Inyang who leaked the photos to ruin Su's reputation out of revenge. Later, Inyang confronts Su in her office, throwing a tantrum about how she has always struggled in the film industry, while Su became rich and successful just by writing stories in the comfort of an air-conditioned room. Su responds to Inyang's tantrum by reminding her that she's earned her success through years of hard work, while Inyang has always tried to take shortcuts and steal from others. Su then reveals her plan to send Inyang to jail, which causes Inyang to become hysterical. In a fit of rage, Inyang tries to attack Su, but Wang steps in to protect her and ends up getting injured. Though Wang is rushed to the hospital, he feels hurt when Su doesn't visit him. Later, he discovers that someone left flowers for him. Curious, he goes outside and runs into Su. Wang immediately apologizes for betraying her but admits that he can't stop his feelings for her. He asks for another chance to prove himself. While Su forgives him for his past actions, she gently tells him that they're not meant to be together and walks away. Meanwhile, Ganga, 
terrified that Su will discover her betrayal, decides to leave the city. She sends Shun away with the promise of meeting him the next day after handling some business. Feeling guilty about Wang's injury, Su goes to check on him again, but he's already been discharged. The next day, she's surprised to find him in her office. After all, she had made it clear he was fired. Wang calmly explains that it's illegal to terminate an employee without proper notice. He plans to use the remaining time to show Su the real him, with no ulterior motives. Later, Ganga convinces Su that she's secured a new film contract and urgently needs 1 million yuan in cash as a deposit. Su is confused by the need for cash, but she trusts Ganga's sincerity and signs the document. Su arranges the cash and, while preparing to fulfill the deal, runs into Wang. He invites her for dessert, but she declines. Instead, she hands him the bag of money and asks him to deliver it to the accounting department. Ganga quickly arrives there and collects the cash. Wang notices Su sitting alone, looking down. To lift her spirits, he takes her on a ride through the city on his bike. The sight of the city lights and the millions of stars makes her smile, if only for a moment. The next morning, as Ganga and Shen prepare to leave the city, Ganga asks Shen to go ahead with the money bag while she excuses herself to the washroom. In reality, she's stalling to help her husband escape with the money. However, she begins to feel immense guilt for betraying Su, her true best friend, unaware that Su already knows everything. Afterwards, Su takes Ganga to a sauna to help relieve her stress. Ganga feels emotional, knowing that Su is trying so hard to make her happy, even though she's been deceiving her. The next day, Ganga comes to Su with her resignation and vows to repay all the losses she's caused the company. However, Su doesn't accept her resignation so easily. She points out that Ganga hasn't found another job yet and won't be able to pay her back. Instead, Su increases her salary by 20% and even offers her housing and food, showing her kindness once again. Later, Su visits Zhang in the hospital. He has realized the error of his ways and regrets cheating on such a wonderful wife. Su forgives him but advises him to start a new life, far away from her. When Su returns to the office, she notices Wang is missing and learns he's out sick, which makes her upset. Ganga, noticing this, plans to bring them back together. She arranges for Su to visit Wang at his house under the pretense of signing his departure paperwork. When Su arrives, she finds Wang perfectly fine, though he continues to claim he's unwell. Su eventually discovers from his phone that he's been attending scriptwriting classes. This frustrates her, as it seems like he's hiding things from her, and she storms out. Later, Su rants to Ganga about Wang's dishonesty. Ganga, growing frustrated, points out that Su has been talking about him for over two hours straight, as if she's developed a crush. Su denies this, though her emotions suggest otherwise. A year passes, and on New Year's Eve, Su is watching fireworks from her office window. She's reminded of the time she spent with Wang a year ago, feeling a little sad that they've lost touch. But then, to her surprise, she finds Wang standing right behind her. He tells her that he's been waiting for this moment to reunite with her. Seeing him again makes Su happy, and she hugs him, filled with joy. Afterward, when Ying Yang is released from prison, she meets with Su. To her surprise, Su hands her an apology letter and a bank card from Zhang, offering her a chance to start fresh life. And that, folks, is the end of this series. I hope you enjoyed the journey.